We're good. Good, good, good. All right, well, it's seven o'clock, so let's kick it off. Uh, so what we're talking around today is attacking strategies. Um, and so this is going to be, again, about 30 minutes, 35 minutes. Um, so just, just quickly, um, what do we think attacking strategies mean? What does it look like? How do we use it? Why is it effective? Um, I would say the attacking strategy is about uh, how you can take advantage of the weaknesses of the opposition. Interesting. Uh, can you go a little bit deeper on that? What, can you explain that a little bit more? Um, all right. Where they basically, in my mind, it'll break down the type of game that you play against other teams. Like if you are playing more of a, um, well, more of a scrum game, or more of a running game, depending on the team that you are playing against. If it's a team of um, that don't defend very well or a team that your players are definitely bigger than the other side, you tend to use more of a straight on, you know, straight Yeah, in. I think, so what you're talking about is using parts of the game to your advantage, right? So yes. if, you're, if you're a bigger team, then use the fact that the game has contact elements in it and use that to your advantage. If you've got players who are small and fast, maybe maybe using the fact that there's the space on the field and things like that. Um, yeah. If you've got a really good scrum platform, then you're going to try and utilize every scrum opportunity as possible. So that's really quite interesting. So before we get into, into that, um, in, in attack, we talked about the six S's last week. Um, in attack, what are, we, what are we looking for more than anything else? What do we want? Space. We want space, right? Um, and so there's space all over the field. Um, and so what are the, th like the, three, the three major ways that we can utilize space? If that makes sense. So there's, there's three ways that we can actually um, attack space. Um, run, kick, and pass. So we can run, kick, and pass. Absolutely. And so when we look at that from a different point of view and we, use, and we can use different terminology, if we were to look to pass the ball, we would probably look for holes in the defense, right? If we yep. were to kick the ball, we'd probably look to kick over the defense. And if we were to run, we'd probably look to run around the defense. So mm -hmm. what we're looking to do, the types of attack really comes down to three different ways. We, kick, we, we go through the defense, we go around the defense, or we go over the defense. And so that's what we're kind of trying to look at today is what, how, can we, how can we manipulate the defense to produce these, uh, these three things? Does that, does that make sense? Yep. So I think, Doug, you were saying, like, if you, you know, if you've got this heavier team um, or this, this team which is good in contact, what we'll probably look to do is probably look to go through, right? We'll probably look to go through them. Um, and once we go through them, then we can break through and whatnot. Uh, sometimes, you know, if, if we kick the ball, we're looking to go over. And if we've got faster players or we've got overlaps, then we'll look to go around. So what we're going to do is we're just going to um, we're just going to go through some scenarios. Um, and with, with those scenarios, what we'll do is we'll just talk around how we can actually utilize the space. So uh, we'll, we'll take a sevens um, game because it's just, it's just easy to move uh, the players around the screen. Um, and it's, it, it then becomes really obvious what we're actually looking to do. So if, if we start with a, let's have a rook in this corner here. Uh, and let's say that they've committed two players to the rook blue team has got two players over as well. Uh, and then we've got this kind of formation with the defense. So if we had, for example, 
this blue team, which is pretty agile, but not, not too fast. Uh, where's all the space right now? Off to the right. Yeah, perfect. So this is where the space is. But this number seven, okay, so this blue seven that we have here, they're not very fast. So if they're not very fast. What should we try and utilize? What should we try and do with them? Let's still go around them. So that we'd look to go around straight away, right? So we'll move the oh. So we'll move the ball, right? And we'll move the ball all the way down. But the seven's not very fast. So what could be another method? The other one would be, um, I guess, through them. Yeah, we can go through. So right now, if we went through, how how big is this spacing? How much how much space is between these defenders? Not as large as the as the outside, but it's still got plenty of space. Yeah, so there's there's not much room at all, right? So in this kind of this area here, they're quite condensed in the fence. So we've got these players, the four, five, six, seven, who are quite slow. What we can start to do is we can move the seven out, right, and the six out. Mm -hmm. And then what happens to the um, to the defense then? What do they have to do? They have to commit. Either they're going to follow the ball or they're going to move to the outside to cover. Yeah, so if they, if they commit and they come in close and they try and take away the space here defensively, then what we have is two easy passes – to get out to the outside. So we find the edge and we can move the ball out wide and we can attack this space. Really quite simple. The other one is the defense may just come and match. So if the defense starts to match now. What have you noticed around the gaps in the middle, in the midfield? Got bigger. They've gotten bigger. They've gotten bigger, right? Straight away we've gotten bigger. So now we've got space, multiple players, which means that now we can start to look to go through. And if we go through like this, then maybe what happens next time, the defense are like, all right, well, we need to get tighter. So as soon as we get tighter, maybe we'll even increase the three. Number three comes in. Now what can we do? Yeah, over. We can go over, right? So how, how do we get the defense to, um, let's say now the number seven is really fast and we want to give the number seven a lot of space. What can we do in attack to give that seven the time and the space that they need in order to attack? Ball carrier can run for the inside shoulder of the defense, which is going to make them cluster, essentially. And once they do that, then, you know, once they start to gather, send it to the outside and let them run. Yeah, perfect. So you, you, you pretty much said it right. So what we need to do is we need to uh, manipulate the, the red team, the defense, in a way that the number seven can have that time and space. So what we could do is we could position the number four here. As soon as we position the number four, they probably have to cover across. So now what we have to do is move these, these defenders in. And what we're gonna do with the, red, with the blue team is we're actually gonna drop our depth, but we're gonna condense our positioning. So right now, what is the red team gonna line up like? We'll put the sweeper back there just to cover. So now where's the space? That's tons of space for that seven. So we've got loads of space now, right? So just because we've condensed an attack isn't necessarily a bad thing. And what we're able to do now is condense that ball so we can move the ball fast to the number seven, who then has got the majority of the field that they can run into. So I don't know if you guys have ever watched the, uh, the USA sevens men's team. This is what they do a lot of the time with Perry Baker and Carlin Isles. So what they'll do is they'll condense in as much as possible because Perry Baker and Carlin Isles are two of the fastest players on the circuit. And all they do is they catch the ball into this amount of space and they're out and they go. Does that make sense? So two, three really easy concepts of how you can manipulate the defense to get them to show what you want to show. So I'm just going to, um, I'm just going to show you a 
quick video clip. USA Sorry, bear with me, adverts. Okay, so share screen again. Okay, so we're just going to watch this. So we have a line out. So we've, we've clustered up the defense. So already there's one, two, three, four England players. One, two, three, four US players. So already they're in a really small space. <clears throat> okay, we've got, some, we've got really good depth here. So England can't rush up and put pressure on us. Okay, another good line of depth. Okay, and now what we have is we'll attack that space and we've condensed and now you've got Perry Baker versus Dan Norton, who is the top try scorer in the World Series and also very fast. But what Perry Baker's now got is 15 meters worth of space to run into. And that's how easy that can be. Just by condensing that attack straight away, we're then able to move the ball with our ability to feed the speed and we take it around the outside. And so that's very similar to um, a lot of the, the other things that we talked about there. So if we've got those bigger players like we talked about, well then let's, let's play from touchline to touchline. And if we play touchline to touchline, then what we're able to do is actually play through the defense as well. So a lot of, um, a lot of the time, coaches will talk about how they like to play with width. And what, what that means is a lot of the time people think they like to get the ball from into these wide channels. And what that actually means is that we want to play with width, which means we want to play where we take up the literally the whole field. That then allows us to find gaps in the middle of the field because the defense has to stretch and has to spread. So when we're looking at these attacking philosophies and attacking strategies, it's really important that we know what we want to do, whether we want to go through the fence, around a defense or over a defense. And if we want to do all three, that's fine, but we all need to be on the same page with that. And that's really quite difficult to do. So making sure that we identify the space first and we understand how we're going to get in the ball into that space, whether it's a run, a kick or a pass. Any questions on that? Quite a simple concept, right? So in the, in the teams that you guys currently work with, play with, coach with, um, how, how do you guys teach the attack? Is it a lot of it through, around, or over? I know, I know for us, especially for our women's team, we have, we have a lot of forwards. We have a couple of people who are fast, but they're, they're not really sure of their speed. So they, they run timid. Mm -hmm. um, so, so trying to get them to take the ball and do like, like Perry Baker and just go. Um, it can be hard, um, but our coach does teach us the run for space, not space, and uh, a lot of quick ball. Nice. So, you know, you mentioned that you've got a lot of forwards in your team. Can you play with width with a lot of forwards? Oh, yeah. Absolutely, right? Yeah. If, the thing is, is like if we play with width with forwards, then it's a lot harder for, let's say that the, the team uh, in red is, uh, you know, they're a, lot, they're a smaller team, they're full of backs. You give a mm -hmm. forward a one-on-one -on -one scenario with a back, with space, 
it's going to be interesting, right? Likewise, yeah. if we if we then start to find mismatches, so if we if we were to go, um, let's let's make the forwards just a touch bigger. So make the forwards a little bit bigger. So now what we have is forwards. Mm -hmm. So what, what could you start to identify now? Like you said, a lot of mismatching. Yeah. Um, right. If you if you if you got the five there, if your five if that five is slower, even just a step slower than that one, that that's a lot of space between the five and the seven on the on the red. So they can easily go. And if your two can kick, kick it over, let that one chase. Yeah, I mean so what it, that's that's a really good point, right? So the mismatches. Once mm -hmm. we're able to identify, do we go through the defense, around the defense, or over the defense? We could then start to be a little bit more intelligent around how we actually do that. So, I would I think you know straight away if we were in this two position, you've got a great opportunity here. Give the ball to one, and then let one have some fun through this gap here, like you said, right? But we could even go okay. Well, let's have a little bit more fun and put the number three on the number seven with the six. So you now you've got the seven with the two and the six. I mean, that's a great sight to see is when the two forwards are running at a small back, right? And especially when they throw a dummy as well. Um, so uh, just just having to think around that, those attacking philosophies and looking for those mismatches, what do you think the easiest method to execute is? I, I would still say quick ball. Just uh, get it out, um, find the space, and just go. If it if it comes to contact, get low. So so we're looking at which which is the easiest to execute through, over, or around. Oh, I was the wrong person to ask. Let that go through. <laughs> Okay, so let's 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 work off that. Why do you like going through? Because usually I'm bigger than everybody, <laughs> okay. and because I know I know a lot. Of, I get I get I get excited, and my passes go to my pass and passing starts to get really really bad. So it's usually a lot easier to just hang on to it and uh, have my support with me in case I in case I do get tackled. Okay, perfect. So straight away we've identified that sometimes depending on the type of attack we want to do, we want to have different skill sets. So we can't talk about going over the defense if we don't have anybody that can kick, right? Because if right. Let's, say, let's say we we do kick and we're aiming for this corner over here, <laughs> but we can't kick, the ball ends up straight to the number three. So we're not really being effective. Maybe. Uh, and likewise, right. you know, if we pass the ball to number three and we see that the six has come in and we want to go around because the number seven has got so much space out here, but number three can't pass, mm -hmm. we're going to struggle to go around. Yeah. So it's, it's really crucial right. to understand the skill sets that these players have. So not only just identifying the mismatch and identifying where the space is, but also then being able to identify, actually, I don't have this skill set, so I can't execute this skill. Um, would we encourage as players and coaches to try those skills? Not me. Doug, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, um, the only way you get better at it is by taking it upon yourself to do, the, do it. I mean, me personally, I have a, like Marie, most of my, my girls are uh, more scrum or rock, rough and tumble oriented more, more into the, you know, the majority of them have always been scrum players. But if they pass the ball, they do have the ability to go around the outside, you know, with a switch or loop or anything like that. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, I think that's really quite good, right? So identifying that they have the ability and encouraging players to, to actually try new things. 
So at, at currently at ARPTC, we have a, uh, a situation where we are very good at moving the ball when we're condensed into this kind of position and moving the ball out wide to the wingers who can, who can get around the outside when we're fast. And something that we're working on hard is being able to go right touchline to touchline. Are we able to move the ball at pace and look to go through the attack while holding our width? And that's a really difficult skill to do while avoiding contact, right? Being able to have that skill set of, well, here's the space, the space is in the middle, let's catch pass, let's hit onto the ball, and let's try and utilize 2v1 scenarios in the middle of the field. So do we have the ability to kick over the top and chase? Yes. Do we have the ability to condense the, de to condense the defense and run around? Yes. But we want to become a team where uh, we want to produce players where they can do all three options all the time. And so if the picture is constantly changing, we want to be able to have them adapt to those scenarios and those, and those environments where they can, they can then recognize, okay, well, we need to go over now. We need to go around or we need to come, we need to go with, go with width and go through. So it's, it's a really cool, um, it's a really cool concept and really simple concept of looking at the attack. Uh, I think sometimes we overcomplicate the attack. Again, all we're looking to do is those six S's from last week, scan, space, speed, sports, skills, score, and then just looking at which methods that we can use to find and get that ball into the space. So a little bit, a little bit quicker than I anticipated, but um, any, any questions just on those three things? It, it's, it's interesting. So of these things that we're talking about, is, is there anything new here that we don't know already? No. <laughs> it's, it's really quite simple and obvious, right? But how often do we, when we're playing or when we're coaching, do we actually utilize this knowledge and explain it to our teams? As soon as the game starts, it goes out the window. <laughs> yeah, and so that's, that's one of the, the really interesting things, right? It's being able to either coach or be able to play in an environment where you're constantly thinking about these things. So, okay, here's the picture in front of me. How do I beat this? And everyone's answer normally, depending on your skill set, is just run forward and go through it. Um, but trying to make that next step, that next level of development, what we really need to start looking at is the, you know, the three ways that we can actually beat that defense uh, or manipulate the defense before we even have the ball in our hands. So I'll give you guys a couple of scenarios here and you tell me what we should do in defense, uh, what we should do with the attack, sorry. Okay, so we, we have a penalty in this position. The defense have set up the way they have, and the attack is in this kind of position right now. So this the attack has control, remember, right? So we're talking on the attack, so the attack's got control. Where should we attack right now? Um. First instinct is go at, at least a step or two to start between the two and the six on defense, or send it out to the three and try to get that six around as, as quick as possible. Okay. Um, where's the space right now? Um, yeah. In the far right of the field. So it's, it's behind, right? So it's in oh. it's here. And it's also out here. So how can we, if, if let's say we've got two phases, how can we keep this space out here? How can we keep this space wide? I would give it to three. The middle goes. Go ahead, Murray. No, 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 no. Go ahead, go ahead. Because mine was, <laughs> was going to be the same. just bowl I mean, through. <laughs> No, well, I was still going to do the similar thing, but I would basically give it to three, three, take it into five and six, set it up, and then the space should still be outside because all the players have to converge on the rough in the middle. All right, perfect. So let's, let's play that scenario through. So we'll give the ball to three. Three takes it up into this space here. Okay, who hits your rook? The rook here will be... Uh, the two? 
two passing in, but you have a uh, number one coming in from the outside. Okay, so then where does the six go? Into this channel? The six would go wide, yep. Six comes wide? Well, when I say wide, uh, at there, number seven. Okay. And I would bring my seven across the back. This way? Yep. Okay, excellent. So in quick ball and out. So we, we could even we could even probably um, save some energy for the number seven. So the number if the number six comes in and the number seven comes all the way around, probably save some energy a little bit. And what we could do is we could have the six take this space in here and have the seven come in here. Yeah. Right. And then what you have is a you could go right. Well, there's the pass to a forward who can take it up to this edge here. And all of a sudden you've got these three players who then have to scramble across and take that space away. So if they do that, let's say we've now got a rook set up over here into this space. What now is going to happen to the defense? What are these four red players going to do? They're going to have to move back. So they will probably move in the direction of the rest of the defense, right? And probably close this gap. Are we in agreement there? Yep. Yeah. What should this number four now do? The blue number four. Be ready to go. Should they should they hold their width or should they come in field? Because the number two and the number three are gonna come close to the rook, right? Should they hold their width? Yep. Or should they come in close? I would keep him out around the fifteen. Yeah, we keep, I, I keep them on in the five meter line, to be honest. I keep them really wide. And, and here's why is because that, these four players have made that transition across the field. Their hips are going to be turned. They're, they're running towards the ball. If we can get a quick pass out, three, two, five, four, all of a sudden we can utilize all this space over here, right? So it's just, it's just a very interesting way of looking at the game uh, in terms of what we can do and how we can manipulate the defense just with our positioning before we even get the ball. So Marie, quick quiz for you. What are the three methods or the three strategies of attack? For attack, it's going to be through, around, and over. Perfect. And for a bonus point, can you remember the six S's of attack that we did last week? <laughs> there was scan. So what do we scan for? You're, you're scanning for space. Okay, once we find the space, what do we need to do? How quickly is that space going to be cut away and turned down? I can't remember the word for it. We've got to, we've, we've got to utilize that space fast, right? We've got to yes. utilize that space fast, so we need the speed. In order to use the speed and get the ball fast there fast, we need what to get the ball there? Oh, it begins with S and it ends in kills. <laughs> so you need the skills to get there, right? Yeah. Once we have the skills, skills, we need to catch it. I'm sorry? Once we have the skills and we throw that pass or that kick, who needs to catch it? Our support player. I'm player. completely flooded. Our support. <laughs> and, then we, and then we score. And then you score. So let's, let's have a look at the, uh, so we talked about the first receiver vision last week, right? So number three is the first, first receiver vision. Right now, what are they scanning for? They scan and they're looking all over the field and they're looking for space. So there's the space, excellent. So in order for, to find that space, okay? So we've got our scan, we've scanned first, we've got our space, we've identified it. We now need to move the ball straight away, fast into this, into this space. We can either do that with passing the ball or kicking the ball. In order to do that, we need some skills to, move, to transfer the ball fast yeah. or to kick the ball into the space. We need our two and our five and our four to support. 
Okay, and then ideally our five and our four are doing the scoring. And then you've got group, okay. group over and around, and then the six S's. Compile those together, and you've got a pretty healthy attack straight away. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I hope this has been useful. Um, I know. I know that it's um, it's very like it's very fundamental and very obvious and base level, um, but it, it's so so important to understand these concepts and these ideas before we can actually complicate anything else. Uh, and I think this is one of the things that a lot of teams and a lot of clubs and players want to do is they want to advance and they want to try new things and do all these things, but they need to get the foundations right first. And a lot of teams and clubs don't have those foundations. And so the more that we can practice and understand these foundations, the more that we can build on top of them. So ho hopefully it's, this, is, this is becoming more and more useful and you kind of see the journey that we're on here over these next 13 weeks. Or it'll be what? Like yeah, I mean, it's eight weeks now. Yeah, I mean, it's useful in that it gives me another way of looking at um, basically pulling out just like you have, it, but not the video, of course, but using it on paper and kind of explaining to them the ways that you can attack and how you can use the skills we're going to learn and that kind of stuff. So it's more of a classroom as well as a practical, if you know what I mean. Yeah, no, absolutely. Excellent. All right, well, I, I appreciate it, guys. Uh, and I'll I'll see you guys Thank you. next Monday. Yes, sir. Next Monday, yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you.